To say there's been hype around the Nothing Phone 1 would be something of an understatement. While drip-fed leaks, snappy social media posts and an exclusive launch via StockX have helped play their part in building to a crescendo though, the real test for Nothing begins now. The company is now breaking into a very competitive mid-range smartphone market, and it's the first product launched since the earphones last year. The Nothing Phone 1 then represents the real beginning of founder Carl Pei's ambitions with this new brand. But has all the hubbub been worth it. I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocketlint and this is our review of the Nothing Phone 1. And while you're here, if you do like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. Now, the unique design of the Nothing Phone 1 has been widely shared before. Turning to a transparent back glass plate, the insides of the phone can be seen and have been carefully designed to provide interest and texture. There's a deeply satisfying geekery to the Nothing Phone 1, and while we've seen similar transparent finishes from HTC and Xiaomi in the past, those mostly showed off fake components. Nothing, the brand, conversely had to consider what each of these components would look like if you could see them, and then design around that. Adding substance to the design is something called the Glyph Interface. These lines of white LEDs are designed to illuminate the rear of the phone and can actually notify you of different things. Notifications, the phone's charging status and more are all carefully synced with the geeky sounds and the haptic feedback that the phone offers. But the question is whether the Glyph interface is actually useful, and that's questionable. It's great for showing off to people and it certainly draws attention to itself. But once you're over the novelty, it really doesn't do that much, especially as we tend to put our phone screen up to avoid scratches, so it's often hidden anyway. At the same time as all this, there's something quite controversially conventional about the Nothing Phone 1. The angular aesthetic is highly reminiscent of recent iPhone designs. Now, even down to the shape and the location of the buttons. There's an in-display fingerprint scanner which works well, unlocking the phone without issue, and there's decent stereo speakers built into the frame too, and these provide good audio, perfect for ad hoc video watching or gaming. Now, the display of the Nothing Phone 1 is befitting of that iPhone design, with a neat bezel trimming the edges and equal on all sides. This is actually quite a big deal. Nearly every other phone in this price segment and many more expensive models haven't managed to get this completely uniform frame design successfully. Nothing has, and it means there's this very pleasing sense of symmetry to the front of the Nothing Phone. Unlike the iPhone, however, there's no ugly notch. Instead, we have a left-mounted punch hole for the front camera. The display is generally bright and vibrant, but the auto brightness seems to be a little sluggish, or confused perhaps. First thing in the morning, we've unlocked the phone to experience piercing max brightness from it, and outdoor shooting photos in the sun, it's been at around 75% making everything look a little dark. Although the adjustment is only a swipe away and the quick settings pane, it does feel like the calibration isn't quite right. But this is a good OLED panel, supporting HDR, and it looks great, handling a full range of content nicely. Aside from brightness niggles, we have no complaints. The adaptive refresh rate is also interesting. It's not the same as you'll find in flagship devices because it only goes between 60 hertz and 120. It doesn't go down as low as 10 or one hertz. Now moving on to performance, and the hardware loadout of this phone is very much in mid-range territory. The Snapdragon 778G Plus is a 5G system on a chip, meaning you have fast connectivity for data and plenty of power. This isn't sitting in the same space as flagship phones, neither in terms of the power or the battery capacity, but we've seen some really impressive mid-range devices over the past couple of years, and from a performance point of view, the Nothing Phone 1 is really no different. The difference between flagship and mid-range in daily use is usually minimal, and in many devices you'll find that the lower power hardware offers better stamina. These devices tend to be less power hungry when you're just using them casually day to day, unless you're pushing them hard, like when you're playing games. Now, hitting the Nothing Phone one with long sessions on Call of Duty Mobile does see it working hard, but the phone stays comfortably cool, with the only real impact being on battery life. This is common to mid-range phones, but the good news is that games run smoothly. They look great and everything is responsive enough, so gaming is great. There's a 4,500 mAh battery, which isn't huge, but it is pretty standard. It will typically get you through a full workday without any issues. With balanced usage, we've had no concerns about it running flat until hitting those hardcore games. With 33 watt charging, it's not the fastest out there on paper, and there's no charging brick in the box, just the USB-C cable. That means you'll need to use an existing power delivery charger to get the best out of your phone. However, wireless charging support does give you another option. 
And there's even reverse wireless charging available on the rear of the phone to help boost your headphones on the fly. So if you already have the Nothing earbuds, you can charge them on the back of your phone. And that's actually a remarkably rare feature in a mid-range device, as is wireless charging generally. Now overall, in terms of performance, we can't fault the Nothing Phone 1, not really. It's a solid mid-range performer hitting the same sweet notes as its close rivals, like the Samsung Galaxy A53 or the OnePlus Nord 2T. Now let's switch to cameras. There are two cameras on the back of the Nothing Phone 1, with Carpe claiming that they wanted to offer two good cameras rather than load it out with lots of pointless lenses. We're pleased that Nothing is keeping things realistic, but in reality, while the main camera is good, the ultrawide doesn't really elevate itself above what's typical in this segment of the market. Starting with the main camera, it's capable enough with good detail and color in daylight conditions, and most people will be perfectly happy with the performance. There are some tonal differences between the main and the ultrawide wide camera with the ultra wide looking slightly cooler and the main camera gives a more realistic color balance and is richer and that may well draw people into using the main camera more and swerving away from the ultra wide when taking photos all the expected functions are in place such as night mode and portrait mode with both producing decent results and helping the phone one remain competitive the portrait mode includes a manual option to adjust the aperture changing the strength of the background blurring. And edge detection seems similarly good too, but it's also worth bearing in mind that with an f-stop 1.88 main camera, it can actually produce good background blur without the portrait effect. There's no optical zoom here, everything is digital, and there's a tap to jump to two times from the main camera, but the ability to zoom right up to 20 times. However, that's a little extreme because once you push towards that 20 times, you will get really bad mushy images. The front camera performs well enough in good lighting too, and also allows access to the portrait function. And again, the edge detection is pretty solid for those perfect selfies. Now, before we wrap this up, let's talk quickly about Nothing UI, the phone's software. It is an almost pristine version of Android. There's no bloat or additions, and in that sense, it's closer to the experience of a Google Pixel than a lot of other mid-rangers. There are only a few minor changes, and Nothing has infused the phone with its dot matrix system lettering and a few cool wallpapers to try and define the Nothing experience a little better. There are little touches that reflect this retro cool feel, like the tape-style voice recorder, but not a lot that's too substantial. There's a change to the quick settings to make connectivity a little simpler, elevating the cellular, Wi-Fi and hotspot settings, as well as Bluetooth. That's much simpler than the stock Android 12 offering, but it's not as exciting as it could be. Of course, there will be updates coming and one has already landed on our review unit as they fix bugs and add new features like Tesla functionality and access to NFT galleries for those who are into that sort of thing. It is worth pondering, do mid-range phone buyers also buy NFTs and expensive Teslas? We doubt it. More importantly than all of that though is the commitment to three Android version updates and four years of security, which is pretty competitive for this level of phone. Of course, with this being a new brand, we have no idea if those things will actually arrive or how timely they will be. With Samsung or Google at least, you have a better idea of what to expect. So overall then, the Nothing Phone 1 is a very solid Android phone, and certainly a very solid first offering from Nothing. It shows maturity in the software and offering performance that many will appreciate in the mid-range. The battery life is good, with the reverse wireless charging being a little more unique at this price point. Now, Nothing's aim of delivering two decent cameras doesn't really come through, but you do get a competitive main camera and avoid the multitude of junk lenses that many rivals push, so that's a positive. Really, the only thing that makes this phone stand out is the design. And we're more drawn to the intricacy of the back than we are to the glyph interface, which beyond the novelty is of questionable use. So the experience of using the Nothing Phone 1 is overwhelmingly positive, but we can't hand on heart say this changes things from the status quo drastically. Let us know what you think of the Nothing Phone 1 in the comments, or you can grab me on Twitter. I'm at Cam Bunton over there. Again, if you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.